Welcome to the Great Basin Seasonal Outlook for March through June. Over the last 30 days, we've seen a change to the weather pattern. Still cooler temperatures across much of the West and well below normal temperatures anywhere from eastern Nevada eastward across Utah, Idaho, into Wyoming. Precipitation after a very wet January tapered off in February, and we generally saw below normal precipitation. Some exceptions were parts of southern areas of the Great Basin and western areas and small areas that did see above normal precipitation. Looking at our percent of average precipitation dating back to the beginning of the water year on October 1st, you can see still well above normal precipitation even with the drier February that we saw. Still well above normal across much of the northern half of Nevada, into much of Utah, Arizona, and even up into eastern Idaho and parts of Wyoming. Our current snowpack, despite the drier conditions over the last 30 days, has still held very strong and we're still sitting over 150 or 200 percent of normal across all of Nevada, Utah, into Arizona, and then closer to normal further north up into Idaho and Wyoming. Looking at how this year's snowpack compares with some previous years, the better comparisons so far in 2023 have been 2017 and 2006 for parts of the western areas of Nevada into the Sierra. You can see the snow, has, the snow level has tapered off or the snowpack has tapered off with the drier conditions in February, but we will see con continued storms going into March, so we will see that snowpack increase. But you can see again, 2017 and 2006 were certainly some bigger years and well above that green normal line. Looking over towards northeast Nevada, we are currently sitting above what we saw in 2006 and 2017 with respect to snowpack, so definitely quite a bit of moisture over the northern half of the state. Going into northern Utah, similar conditions, well above normal snowpack, obviously. We're above where we were in 2011, but not quite as high at this point in the year as 2017, but we certainly were at those levels earlier in January. So again, with the snowpack continuing to go up, I would anticipate we will be approaching some of those maximum levels here soon. Looking up into central Idaho, again, the snowpack up north has been closer to normal. So many of our normal years have been 2015, 2022. Last year was a fairly normal year for snowpack. Again, 2017, which was very wet over Nevada and Utah, also was wet up into Idaho in 2017, but we're nowhere near those levels. So again, closer to average. Similar conditions in Wyoming as well. And then looking a little bit further south into southwest Utah, again, we're seeing uh, some comparisons near 2017, um, just below 2010. Again, 2005 has been our maximum year over the southern areas of the Great Basin, and we certainly are well above normal, and we'll likely see that snowpack tick upwards a little bit, but probably not to those levels we saw in 2005. But again, still a very wet year across the Great Basin. Our 10 hour fuel moisture, just with the moisture, obviously uh, very high, so no concerns with fuel moisture or fire potential here in the short term. 100 hour fuel moisture and 1000 hour fuel moistures follow that same trend, just being high region wide. Looking at our soil moisture with all the snowpack in place and the moisture around the area that we've been getting for the last few months, obviously it's no surprise that soil moistures are very high anywhere into California and to western areas of the Great Basin and then across Utah into Arizona. And this will certainly likely play a role going into the spring as the snow melts with those higher soil moistures. We'll be looking at the fine fuel growth potential, which still looks to be very high across parts of Nevada into Utah and even down into Arizona. Looking at our drought monitor, we have had continued improvements over the last three to six months. Our drought current conditions are showing a generally severe drought across parts of southern areas of the Great Basin into northern Nevada and southern Idaho, with still a few pockets of extreme drought, but this is certainly much better than what we saw at this time a year ago, so these improvements continue. Looking at the drought outlook, taking us through the end of May, showing expected improvements continuing over the northern half of the Great Basin and some areas in the green you'll see that's areas where drought might actually be removed. So we, it looks like at least over the northern half of the Great Basin we are coming out of our long-term drought. Down south we'll probably still continue with at least some areas of drought although we still expect continued improvement. Now looking at some of our drought years and how that correlates to our fire seasons. The boxes in black are showing well above normal or above normal acres burned on BLM lands, so low level, more fine fuel driven fires. And you can see in the black boxes, most of these years, if not all our years, we are either coming in or out of drought or have no drought. 
Again, we don't see these bigger years with fine fuels just due to lack of growth and continuity in the years we have significant drought. So looking at kind of the trend, here we are on the right in 2023, again, coming out of this deep drought we've had for the last three years or so, very similar to probably the drought that we're coming out of in 2016 and also in 2005. So again, that gives you kind of a benchmark for what to expect in some areas. Again, 2005 was anomalous for southern areas, so I would say not to consider that year when looking at southern areas of the Great Basin, but generally areas further north. So for Utah, again, similar conditions. Most of the big years, uh, well above normal total acres burned on BLM lands are in years that we don't have more significant long-term drought. And then for Idaho, similar conditions as well. So now we'll kind of look at what happens from here and looking at La Nina and El Nino. We have been in a state of La Nina for the last three years, and we are likely going to see the sea surface temperatures warm, taking us into more of a neutral territory, and then possibly even heading into El Nino territory later in the fire season or later in the year. So we'll continue to watch that. That does have some implications for our weather going forward, but right now we are still in the state of La Nina until the ocean water is really warm. So what we've been seeing in a, in a typical La Nina winter, since we do typically see those impacts in the winter time from La Nina and El Nino, generally wetter and colder up north, drier and warmer down south. And again, we haven't we have seen that more so in February with the drier conditions down south, but that wetter trend has really affected many areas of the northern northern half of Nevada and much of Utah into Arizona. So now looking at the 8 to 14 day outlook from March 17th, March 7th through the 13th, still through the middle of the month showing troughs moving into the area, cold storm systems bringing below normal temperatures and above normal precipitation. So this stormy pattern with plenty of opportunity for new snowfall and colder temperatures and wind will continue at least through the middle of March. And then there are some signs later in March we, will, we may start to see a ridge build over the west, so possibly a break in this winter type weather that we've been seeing for some time. So looking at our four month predictive services outlook, you can see again for March, colder and wetter conditions, especially over the northern areas, but also even into southern areas of the Great Basin. And again, as indicated here, this is generally the first half of March, so we'll likely see possibly some warmer and drier conditions develop. As we move into April and May, we are still looking for some cooling into northern and possibly western areas. And however, moisture certainly looks like it will start to decrease or push off to the east. So by May and June, we may start to see some warming and drying. But with the shift to neutral conditions from La Nina, we might have more variabilities in our weather. So we will continue to watch this outlook, probably low confidence right now, going into the May-June time period. So the weather outlook for the spring and the early part of the fire season largely will dictate how quickly the snow melts, how much grass grows, and what implications there are for fire potential going into the fire season. So still a lot of unknowns, but what we do know is we have a lot of moisture to get rid of, and we're likely going to see some areas of very good fine fuel growth, especially across Nevada, Utah, and down into Arizona. So that's what we'll be monitoring most. So looking, putting everything together, we're looking at normal conditions for March and April. So obviously that would mean low fire potential. No surprise with the amount of snow we have and the weather pattern. Coming into May and June is where we'll start to see fire potential in the below normal category for southern areas of the Great Basin for May. And again, this is largely due to the extensive snowpack we have and the additions to the snowpack we're expecting. So it will take some time for that to melt. This is mainly in the higher elevations is where we're expecting that below normal fire potential. This will likely continue into June and also spread north up into the northern Wasatch of Utah. May, typically those areas are not in fire season yet but certainly by June they are, so we are expecting below normal conditions. We will have to watch this. We are anticipating some above normal areas in some of our lower elevations of Nevada or Utah, but right now that's just a little bit too uncertain to pinpoint at this time where those areas will be and when they will start, but that certainly will be something we'll be watching. Also as a note, up into Idaho, certainly no above normal through June, but as we get into July and August, the one area we do have carryover from last year, since we haven't had has had as much snowpack further north, will be along the Snake River Plain, where we had quite a bit of grass growth going into last fire season. So we'll likely have some carryover there, and also possibly some carryover for far northwest Nevada, and again, areas that haven't seen the longer duration, low elevation snowpack 
that areas further south and east have seen. So, but that'll be more towards our main peak of fire season in July and August. We'll be looking at those areas. So that concludes our seasonal outlook for this month. Check back on April 1st for the next outlook.